Okay, so when it comes to the weathering, obviously um, there's various different tricks and tips you can use to it. A lot of people use oil washes, things like that. Obviously, I'm going to be using our Pro Models ones and showing exactly how we're going to do it with this. A nice aircraft to work with because we've got a camo scheme and also we've got a grey underside as well. So you've got the sort of different type of effects you're probably going to get at home doing your own aircraft, depending on what paint scheme. So it'll cover. Now, the thing with the washes is there's things to remember. Depending on which surface you go over will give you that type of effect and I'll, little, I'll tell you sort of the reasons why for it. If you're going to come over a totally glossy um, type of surface, what will happen is the wash will go on, it will dry, when you wipe it away it will all come off completely apart from where it cannot be wiped away, i.e. panel lines, uh, riveting detail, things like that. If you're going to go over a satin finish, because there's a certain texture to the paintwork, um, the wash gets caught up in that texture and gives a grimy type of dirty look to it. Okay, then if you go over a flat one, and to be honest, you can probably hear here how this is extremely flat. Okay, this will give a very dirty, grimy finish because what's going to happen is the wash is going to get caught in the texture of this grittiness. Okay, and then what's going to happen is it's going to then not be able to be removed and it's going to stay put and it's going to give a very heavy weather type of look to your model. Now, also, depending on how wet your cloth is, will depend on how much you take away. And you might see in these demos, and you've seen me do it shows and that, I lick to take it off. That's only because I can tell exactly how much has gone on the cloth, and then what I tend to do. I just use a square, normally fold it into another square, I lick it, rub it on the back of my hand to knock most of the moisture off, so it's literally just a tiny bit on there, and then we're going to wipe it away, and that way it will take off very little, because it's only rehydrating a small part of the clay and wiping off. So it's sort of a balancing act between how much wash actually goes down, and on, onto what type of surface, so you've got a lot going onto flat, you're going to leave a lot behind, you're going to need a lot of moisture to get most of it off, if you use very little moisture you're going to take very little off and have extremely heavily weathered. If you're doing something very nice, you want a nice modern airliner in glossy or something else like that, obviously go over a couple of coats of gloss. For that I must admit I do like to use um, the Johnson's range, so we've got the new one here which is Pledge, and obviously I've got the old one here. There is a difference, one is a milky colour, one is white, they both do exactly the same thing in testing so I wouldn't worry about it too much. But what I would say is if you're going over an enamel paint, give it a week to dry first, okay? If you're going over an acrylic paint, give it at least a couple of days just to go rock hard because in all testing where people have had it stick to the surface, it's either the surface is still sort of a bit sort of tacky, so when the wash goes on and you're doing this rubbing action, you're actually grinding it into the paint work and that's obviously something we don't want or the other reason is that the paintwork is so rough it's getting caught in the texture of it and extremely hard to come off <clears throat> so if we start on the underside and uh, if we pick a, a wing for this demonstration what I'm going to use I'm going to use the dark dirt as I say it's a great color because you can use it for anything and it's a dirty grimy type of look if it's too strong and standing out too much obviously we can come back at a later time and just take it off as I said, it's important that you're going to put down something to protect your decals because what will happen is the wash will get underneath the carrier film, that's the clear parts of your decals, and then what's going to happen is when you come to wipe it off, you can't get to it because it's underneath and gets stuck. So give it a couple of coats, then you can come back and get on there. So what we're going to do, I'm going to take this straight out of the bottle, okay, just on like this, and then all we do, we come along and we're just going to brush this in. And because this is on a flat surface, it's going to go on extremely easy. If it was on gloss, it might have a few problems. And all we're going to do is just going to brush it down this wing, just like so. Okay. Happy how it's got on. Okay. We'll just do the other wing as well. Okay, nice circular motions just to rub it in and get it into all those panel lines. Obviously, what happens is when you come along in a moment to take it off, you're going to do circular motions as well, and that will just make sure it gets into all the, the recesses and the different areas like that. So what we'll do, we'll just do down in here as well. Okay, and I know a lot of you have never seen me do this before, now thinking, my God, he's just ruined his model, but it's just a little bit of faith in this one, guys. It will be absolutely fine. Now, obviously, for the top side, it will be exactly the same. So for this one, I'm going to use the dark dirt. Okay, and we'll go across these wing areas again, just for the moment. Same with the other wing.
just like so. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to let that dry off for about sort of 20 minutes, come back and have a look. Okay then, so this has been on there for about 20 minutes and all I did a moment ago is pop around with an airbrush just on air and just blew it all away just to get rid of any bits that might be hiding around so that you get little track patterns and things like that. But generally, as you can probably see, um, sort of in the difference between the normal body and obviously the wings, um, you've got a de definite grimy look to it already. Now, the thing you have to remember, this isn't perhaps like you're thinking of an old-fashioned sludge wash. This is very thin because you're getting it to give an overall effect rather than just plastering something on. So if you are thinking it's very thin and watery, don't panic. It will still do exactly the same thing. So as you can see, if you are happy with... Perhaps this side's a little bit better to show if you are happy for this sort of level of grime and it gives it dirt, then that's absolutely fine. So if you take a dry cop, uh, piece of um, kitchen roll and give it a rub, you'll notice you'll hardly get anything off, but what you'll give is a more even effect to it. Now you have to make sure your areas are dry on there, something like that, um, and you can go. So obviously it only takes off just a little bit. As soon as you wet it, what happens is, you can see, it turns back to a watery substance, okay, and just wipes away. So if you do a sort of circular pattern, what you'll do is ingrain it into the panel lines and the rivet detail, okay, as you go along. And the more you wet it, the more you'll take off. Okay, so if you wanted to give it a certainly a nice sort of grimy type of look to your model, you want to use very little moisture okay and just give it a, a small rub just all over like that and there we go that's the panel line detailing they've got a little bit of silvering off of the the decals under there okay but obviously we'll lose that with a flat coat but as you can see it's a nice grimy type of effect to that which gives us a nice look to the actual model itself so as you can see on something like that and the close up there we've just got it in there so obviously if i really wet the cloth you can take off even more with it okay but it gives us a nice sort of grimy look so over on the other side let me just move it a little bit as you can see we've got it on there so wetting in and just go the direction of the airflow and there we go nice perfectly done panel line as you can see where we've got the decal it's a lot more shiny it's because it's literally wiping clean off of that now if i've gone over it all with a flat coat um, then it would obviously have married up a little bit better. But because we just want it to be a type of grimy effect with just the panel lining, there we go. We come up with that type of effect, which as far as I'm concerned is a lovely finish to that. So what I'll do is I'll take some stills of this and then can show you. But if I show you over here on this black one, let's wash that, it will show you a little bit more what we've got. So if we grab a new piece of tissue, okay, this is our top of the, the wing section we have, and obviously if we just gave it a rub, because it's over a couple of coats of future, it's quite a glossy finish, 99% of it will rub off the surface, just like that, giving us a very grimy look, and you can see it there on the cloth, but if you wet it, obviously what we'll do, we'll just be left with it in the panel lines, and nowhere else. So we've got a lot more coming off now for the cloth. And obviously we've got a bit of pre-shading under here, so it's giving us that look underneath. So there we go. One wing section done very, very nicely. And again, I'll take a photo of this. So on something like on the, the top wing section here, you can go along and you might think, right, okay, we're going to have a wipe around and see how it's looking and to me I like that look it's an absolutely lovely look it gives us a nice one so I'll just take a photo of that Okay, so basically we're all done now. That's the basics of doing like a panel line wash and a rivet wash and giving it some grime. So depending on your surface going on and how moist it is, that's how you get. And as you can probably see uh, on the close-up on the other one, um, you can see there we've got some nice grime going on, especially underneath various areas of it. But obviously what we want to do with this particular one is take it to the extreme and really weather this one down. Now for doing that, 
as I said before, if you're going to go along and put it on with just literally a, um, with a brush, you can tell where you're going, you're all pretty safe. Now, if you want to go um, a little bit sort of further with that, what you can do, you can take the wash, pop it in your airbrush. Okay, this has got the 0.2 needle in this, uh, 0.2 needle, um, and we're squirting this around about sort of 22 to 25 psi. What we're going to do is gently build up some weathering. So obviously we're going to be more concentrating sort of down the back end of this one. So what we're going to do is literally come along. Okay, it's quite an awkward shape for showing to the camera. But what we're going to do is spraying it in the direction of the airflow. Okay, we are just going to put down a light coat couple of passes, cut to air and dry it off. As I said before, the more this has got on, the better it is because it dries to itself. Okay, and it sticks and once it sticks, it sticks on very, very well. But it does need a little bit to get going. If it's looking a little bit wet, okay, then you can just move off. And I'm going to put a bit on the tail as well because we want this one to sort of grime up and look quite dirty, especially down the back end. So we're just doing very light passes over it and we're trying not to flood it. So imagine if you were gonna be doing airbrushing generally, you just literally, couple of passes, squirting over it, okay? And then you can cut to air and dry it back, perhaps. But what we've done now, because we've got the wash on there first, that's going in all the panel lines and all the stuff like that. So this will literally help us out okay and just give us a dirtier type of grimy look to it so you can see you going down down here okay so what we do we just move this camera close up one out a little bit so you can see what's going on a little bit better okay so we've done that so what we're going to do we're going to put a little bit around underneath the bottom Okay, and being the wash, it's very handleable. You don't have to worry about this stuff too much. Okay, we're going to put a little bit down on the, the wings because we want to grind them up as well. Certainly around the undercarriage area. But what we're trying to do is just dirty this aircraft up a little bit. Okay, so we're just working it. And if you notice, we're still blowing it all in the direction of the airflow would be in real life. Okay, and just keep it light and don't flood it. Okay, then we're just cutting to air. We're going to dry this back. So what you'll notice is when um, this dries off, it dries quite light. But when we come back with our flat coat, as we'll do afterwards, it will then darken it up again. So it will go a little bit darker. Okay, we've used one colour cut there, so we're just going to dry this off now. And what I'm going to do, if you want to watch me for a minute, I'm going to carry on round everywhere and just really weather this up and you can watch how I do it and how it comes along. <laughs> 